Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, I literally always think about comics. It's every every single thing. So on TikTok, you know, they kind of determine what you like, and then they show you more of that. And then, so I get a lot of mill talk stuff. That's military TikTok. And one of them, they were showing one of the, uh, you know, camps on Camp Pendleton. Uh, so. The way that Camp Pendleton, that's the major West Coast Marine base is, is that it's this giant, gigantic base. And then you have little, you know, you have like uh, SOI, well, you have Mainside, you have freaking Airfield, you have uh, San Mateo. And so, but the deal is that it's almost like a cheap video game where they just repeat the same building designs like, you know, like, uh, battalion headquarters is going to be the same on every one. You, you know, the, uh, there's a little variety in the, uh, newer, uh, barracks, but new is like 20 years ago. <laughs> I remember when I first got to, uh, San Mateo after, after I was done at SOI and that's literally on the same base. They're just a couple miles away. Since I was, uh, married at the time, I got put into, uh, a separate older, even older barracks that was called the crack houses. And while I was walking up, I was like, this looks familiar. And then I remembered it was because, uh, USA today had had a cover story about like all of the problems with like mold and, and, you know, uh, below standard living conditions. And it was literally in the place that I was at anyway. They showed one of the camps and people were saying like, oh, this is, uh, this is Las Flores. This is, Pol uh, Polgas. This is Mainside. And I was like, no, no, that's Camp Horno. It's Camp Horno just south of SOI. And I know because I went there one time and I went to the PX and I freaking read a Brian Michael Bendis, Alex Maliev daredevil issue right there. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, um, how do I say this? Uh, every Marine on Pendleton is going to go to like the main side. But if you're from San Mateo, you're, you're going to be on San Mateo or out in the field. Like you're not going to go to Las Pulgas or Horno for almost any reason. I think we went to Pulgas once for some arty training. Anyway, three minutes in. Oh, not even three minutes in. Two minutes, 50 seconds in. So, um, I saw this yesterday, <laughs> but then this morning I had like three different ideas for videos and it's like, uh, some of those I already covered in a community post. And, uh, but when I saw this picture yesterday, I laughed and this kind of fits all of the things that I wanted to say in like a grab bag of ideas in that women overwhelmingly are encouraged slash force slash gaslit into pretending to like things that they don't like. And it's gotta be miserable. I gotta be honest. I love comics. It's tough right now. There's not very many good comics. There's just endless activism and the employees are just rude and mean and miserable people. It's not funny. It's not fun. What keeps me here <laughs> is that I actually like it. So I'm just trying to weather the storm. I got to tell you, it's not fun looking at my portfolio this year. But that that's how you, that's, this is investing, you know. It's up and it's down and, oh, shit. Oh, my gosh. I have lost more on Tesla this year than these SJW comic book pros have made in their entire career. But, you know, it's going to recover. They've had good sales. The CEO is just acting stupid as fuck, and that's why the stock is cratering. But their sales are good, and market, oh, everything's good, except for the CEO. He needs to shut the fuck up. But anyway, so I've covered, you know, Heather Antos. She's complaining about reading scripts. I'm like, I've literally, literally read 50-page scripts on my phone in an airplane because, you know, Chuck Dixon... He's like, he's all excited. He's like, I finished it. What do you think? And he's like, well, I'm not waiting to land. I'm excited too. You got Heather Antos complaining about having to read scripts when she's an editor. You got her, uh, she called it a fee 
But somebody um, uh, in the comments said, um, you're not allowed to find your customers. I don't know why she thought. She, she's like, um, if you want to talk about CG, I'm going to start charging you $5. And I think a lot of people misinterpreted that as CG people were coming up and talking to her at conventions. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not happening. She is actually chiding her supporters for bringing up CG. She has made CG her entire identity. Whenever she needs attention, she will mention CG so she can be a damsel in distress. And now she is literally, I don't know what you say, charging her simps for talking to her about the thing that she made her identity. It's insane. And so I was talking to a friend and it's like, you know, I just don't get it. I, I, she's hiring the wrong people or she's in the wrong trade. And I was like, she's hiring the wrong people and she's in the wrong trade. If you read interviews with Heather, she got in because she kind of didn't know what to do. And a friend, a male friend suggested maybe you should get into comics. And then Jordan White was like, oh, and that's thanks a lot, Jordan freaking clown so anyway um one of the saddest weirdest things i see is just the unhappiest women you've ever encountered and they are everywhere in fandom in the industry and they very obviously <laughs> just don't like it i mean this picture of tessa thompson and what's her name i'm blanking her name because it's seven in the morning um yeah, they got in good shape, and sure, I'm sure the scene is, you know, they're chiding uh, Thor because he's not living up to blah, 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 but you can also tell when an actor or actress is really into something. I mean, freaking uh, Chris Evans, when he is Captain America, I mean, that is every guy's dream to be that character, and he loves it. His eyes are literally sparkling like an anime character. He is so happy to be in this role. And he's done, you know, angry scenes. and But you, it just really shines through. And Natalie Portman is just like... First of all, you know she's holding in so many farts. Like, so many farts. They put a tiny woman on that much supplements and protein and creatine. She is basically just holding in farts the entire day. So you got this bloated, creatine, expanded Natalie Portman, and she was like, I used to, I used to do dramatic movies, and you know, I, I wanted to get away from the Star Wars. You remember Black Swan? And now I'm Thor girl or something. I don't know what's happening. Wasn't I Thor's girlfriend like 10 years ago? Tessa Thompson's like, all right, check Raj, another lesbian. Okay, cool. That's cool. Um, I'm pretty sure she's bisexual, but she basically only plays lesbians. And it's not funny. It's not fun. They're not fun. And they're not miserable. Or they're not happy. They're miserable. And there's something that <laughs> miserable people will never do. They will never just... Um, actually, I do know one friend. One friend is completely miserable. <laughs> and, like, nobody knows. He just sucks it up. You know, he's just trying to deal with some shit. Everyone thinks he's this happy-go-lucky guy, and he is fucking miserable. But he's pretty rare. Most miserable people are just eeyore it up, and they are just bringing down the entire room. So now we've got, like I said, Heather Antos literally has a spite career. Um, uh, the funniest thing is that um, every time I mention CG right now, pe like there will be half a dozen, a dozen, two dozen comments where people are like, What's CG? Heather Antos has made being, you know, attacked by CG her entire personality. Then she wants to fine, not fee, fine people for talking about the thing that she made her entire identity. She complains about reading comics when she's an editor and that's literally her job. And then you even see these Tessa Thompson. Now, they're not into this. They don't want to do this. But they're told, their agent's like, hey, you gotta, you gotta be a superhero. They're like, okay, can I play Marvel Woman? No. Oh, first of all, there isn't a character named Marvel Woman. I'm sure there is. But, 
Uh, can I play Batgirl? Well, you're 40. Um, I don't know. Just anything. I don't care. Why? Why do I have to tell? I have, like, she has to fart so bad. So bad. <laughs> she hates it. She, she, she doesn't like the character. She doesn't like comics. The, she doesn't like lifting weights. She doesn't like the, all the discipline. She wants to play, you know, beset, uh, uh, psychologically manipulated ballerinas. That's what she wants to do. That's what she likes. She doesn't want to do this shit. Um, so anyway, um, answers? <laughs> I, I don't really have any answers. This is going to continue, I believe, forever. They're, I'm not a Doctor Who fan, but they're casting the next Doctor Who. And they're like, oh, our stunt casting of a woman didn't work. I know what'll work. Black Doctor Who and black trans sidekick. Boom. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> oh, and I'm not even a Doctor Who fan, but I know that Rose was like a super important character for that fandom. I remember when Rose was introduced and for you know the years she was on and it was constant coverage. Fans absolutely loved Rose. And you know who they're going to love even more? Uh, <laughs> Black trans Rose. Oh my gosh. Everyone just... Whew, it's, uh, it's so fun. The other one, and this is another thing I was going to you know, connect to, uh, is that um, it really does feel... Um, I always use the word beset, that we are beset by Heather Antos and pros like that. Just... Just miserable people who don't want to be here, who don't like comics, who don't like the fans, who don't like literally doing their job. Chris Conroy does the same thing. And I was like, we're babysitters. We've literally been babysitting. Heather on to, oh, are you cranky? No. Do you want to take a nap? No. CG is mean. Yes. Yeah, there's no CG. Those are your friends. I'm going to make them pay me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead and find your... And, and the other thing people said is like, why does an editor have a table at a convention? Like, she, she exists at such a level of privilege that she is being flown out to conventions where people just walk by confused. I saw a tweet where she's like, I got three commissions at Calgary Con. I'm like, that's not a lot. <laughs> so some convention spent, you know, a thousand, you know, on airfare and, and comped hotel to fly her out to spite CG. And she just sat there at an empty table and had three people. It's like, hi, are you the woman who finds her supporters? Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.